Never in the history of humankind, so many people are dying from non-infectious diseases. Diseases that we call nowadays non-communicable diseases as well. About two-thirds, or two out of three people dying in the world of these, in these, in these diseases in the uh, uh, developmental society, in the developed societies, are from these non-communicable diseases. The major bulk are what we call nowadays the cardiometabolic disease, which comp com comprises diseases like cardiovascular disease, obesity, or type 2 diabetes. Now, is this somehow a price that we have to pay for our progress, for the luxury of working from home or from an office instead of a farm? There are many the components involved in these diseases, but one thing that we don't know is what happens at the cellular level. What happens in the cells of humans They make us develop these diseases? We have no idea. In the meantime, we open any medical textbook and we can see that these diseases are you know, a, a, a medical condition or a metabolic disease. However, we're treating these diseases as a nutritional disorder. And that's where, in the meantime, we have a 600 billion with B dollar industry, which is the weight loss industry, that for about two decades, they've been pushing these products, their pills, their uh, uh, weight loss products, their diets, making us believe that they have the key to restore our health and to prevent these diseases. We know very well that they've been failing miserably because they haven't been able to cure these diseases at all. As a matter of fact, we're getting worse and worse and worse. Now, some people say this is a nutritional disorder. Some people say that is a uh, lack of physical activity. Sorry. And some people say, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And some people say that this is a problem with uh, the environment. People, some people say it's a little bit of everything. But again, we have no idea what's going on. Imagine that there's a virus out there that is killing millions of people, and that we would not know what are the mechanisms of the replication and the infection of that virus. We would not be able to develop a vaccine and therefore a treatment. This is the same scenario that we're seeing with these diseases. And again, the uh, weight loss industry is, is trying to push all these products for us to be able to hold on to something that we believe that can cure diseases. But they don't know. We, as researchers, we have no idea what causes this. And the society thinks that we know. So we're in a big trouble. Look at the whole thing that happens with the nutrition and the whole carbohydrates and sugars, for example. We have embedded in our heads that carbohydrates and sugars are the number one cause of all diseases, the one to blame. It's like if they were sent a few years ago by aliens from outer space to exterminate humankind. Come on, give me a break. Humans have been around carbohydrates and sugars for thousands of years. That's a normal part of their diet. They would never die or develop these diseases. Elite endurance athletes, they're the healthiest and the leanest population on Earth, and they have the highest consumption of carbohydrates and simple sugars. Societies that historically have lived the longest, like the Japanese or the Mediterranean, they also have tons of carbohydrates in their diets in the form of white pasta, white rice, and white bread. <laughs> when we were kids, our generation and the previous generations, we ate tons of sugary foods. Who didn't have sugar when I was a kid? Everybody. We didn't develop obesity. It was very rare. The brain. The brain is the most perfect machine that has ever been built. And yet, the solely fuel the brain uses is sugar. The human body has a very tight and precise mechanisms to regulate glucose. So if we still think that carbohydrates and sugars are the ones to blame, we're probably dead wrong. And we're just following the path that the multi-billion dollar weight loss industry wants us to follow. Now, I really think that one of the problems that we have is that we don't have a reference straight. And let me explain this. In every field in life, we work with references. We work with the gold standard. And uh, that's a reference, for example. And with that, thanks to that, we develop things. We create infrastructures. And in science, we explain and discover new things. In the automobile industry, we have three references. We have the regular cars that we drive. We have the broken cars. And then we have the ultimate machines. And those machines are the Formula One and high-performance cars. Those are the perfection. 
and most of the safety feature of fuel economy, design, technology, aerodynamics, and performance come from the development of those high-performance cars. When it comes to humans, we don't have that reference. Forever, we've been using, in every study out there, working with uh, either population with some diseases or some conditions, and we've been always comparing to the control group, and that control group has been always the sedentary, healthy individual. It's very possible that that sedentary, healthy individual Joel, is already developing these diseases. So therefore, we, cannot, we can never get to understand what imperfection is if we don't know what perfection is first. We're comparing imperfection with imperfection. And that's what we don't use the Formula One cars in humans, but we have them out there, and we're watching them on TV almost every day. And this population are the elite endurance athletes. The elite endurance athletes are the only population in the world where 100% of them are free of any acquired cardiometabolic disease. It doesn't exist in this population. And yet again, they have the highest carbohydrates and simple sugars of any humans. Dentists love them, by the way. <laughs> so it's time to really start using. That's perfection. And that's where we can really start changing gears and start using that reference as anything else in life. Now, why elite endurance athletes have the highest uh, uh, performance and they're so good? Well, for the past uh, 20 years, I've been uh, working with uh, elite endurance athletes around the world, and I've been able to study their metabolism and physiology. And one thing that I see as a secret for their performance is that it resides in their cells. And within the cells, it resides in the mighty mitochondria. The mitochondria are the areas in the body where we burn fuels to energy. That's where we burn glucose, where we burn fat, where we burn protein for energy. Now, elite endurance athletes, they need to really perform at the highest level seen in humans. And for that, they need the best mitochondria there. They have the most developed mitochondria of any humans. Lactic acid, or lactate, is a key element for endurance performance. It's the byproduct of glucose utilization. So with exercise, we produce glucose. We use glucose, and therefore, we produce lactate. Now, not lactate per se, but the hydrogen ions associated to lactate, it builds up in the muscle. And eventually, it decreases performance. That's key. And I have 20 years worth of data showing or seeing that those ones with the highest lactic clearance capacity, they're the best ones out there. And where do you clear lactate? In the mitochondria as well. So they have an amazing mitochondria. On the opposite, and that's perfection, on the opposite metabolic pole, we see recent but overwhelming evidence from researchers around the world working with these different cardiometabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, even Alzheimer's, soon to be called the new type 3 diabetes, showing one thing in common in all these diseases, a mitochondrial dysfunction. Those mitochondria are not working properly, and then we have a big metabolic problem. When a mitochondria is not working properly, we cannot burn the glucose. At, during, at, at rest levels, that's where we burn the glucose. It's a complex process, but ultimately, glucose is burning the mitochondria. If the mitochondria is not functioning properly, the pancreas is going to release insulin to try to get the mitochondria in. But there's a faulty mechanism in the mitochondria, so the glucose is going to end up building up, giving rise to insulin resistance and eventually type 2 diabetes. When it hap the same thing happens with uh, fat, the fat can only be burnt in the mitochondria. If the mitochondria is dysfunctional, we cannot burn fat properly, and it's going to be building up, giving rise to a wide ray, uh, array of uh, uh, pro-inflammatory responses related to cardiovascular disease, weight gain, and also probably cardiovascular disease. So that's where we have a big problem here, and that's where we have to see that's imperfection, and we need to know what perfection is, because everything seems to be related at the mitochondria. So why the elite endurance athletes have had such an incredibly developed mitochondria? The main reason is exercise. They train like nobody else in the planet. And exercise is the stimulus that the mitochondria needs to grow and to function properly. Without exercise, mitochondria, they get atrophied. Going back to the uh, example of nutrition, if you go to this country in the U.S. to a dietitian and say, hey, I want to be healthy, I want to be away from these diseases, but I want to eat twice a day and every day of the week, white bread, white pasta, and white rice, they'll shoot you. Say, you're crazy, <laughs> right? There's no way. This is the worst thing that can happen. Well, this is exactly the diet that all these historically soci societies that historically have lived the longest and with the lowest uh, in the incidence of these societies have on a daily basis. 
And I see historically because things are changing and, and they're just trying to develop these societies. But why are they protected and, and they don't die eating uh, bread and pasta and carbohydrates? Because they move and they walk. They walk to work. They walk to the grocery store. They walk to one buy wine. You need to have the wine. They walk to do errands. And by walking that hour a day, that's the stimulus, that's physical activity, that's the stimulus that the mitochondria need to keep proper function and keep growing and not die. On the other hand, what do we walk in America? Here in the U.S., except for some urban areas like uh, you know, uh, Manhattan or San Francisco, where, by the way, they have one of the lowest incidents of these diseases in America, we can't walk anywhere. We don't walk to work. We can't walk to the grocery store. We can't walk to do errands. We need the car for everything. And we end up years, for years, sitting on our butts, going to and from work, plus sitting on our butts and in our desk for many years. And that causes a mitochondrial dysfunction. We know very well with athletes that well-trained athletes, if they, from research, if they stop and become sedentary for two months, their mitochondria decreases by 40%. Imagine if you haven't exercised in 20 years. There's no way you're going to have mitochondria, right? Very difficult. And that's very important to know. Uh, on top of that, of course, through all the nutrition extra and overfed that we're in our society, we, you keep then overloading those mitochondria. The problem that we have nowadays is that in this country, about 33% of the people, they already have prediabetes or diabetes. The projections by 2020, that is tomorrow, is that 52% of the adult population in the U.S. is going to be prediabetic or diabetic. And let's not forget, that being pre-diabetic is already having that metabolic disease. So why in the world, if, if walking is so important, it's so good for, for you, why don't we walk, right? It's just uh, it's something that you can do the trick. Well, the main thing is like, you know, it's been erased completely out of our brains. We watch these TV shows, the reality shows, where the extreme diets and extreme exercises, where they sell deprivation when it comes to nutrition, and they sell no pain, no gain when it comes to exercise. You know, if you put the two of them together, we're creating legions of miserable and unhappy people. <laughs> but we're not sending the message, right? I mean, that's that kind of the, the gold standard. That's, that's the only way we can be healthy and lose weight. We know that's not true. We know that 90% of those people, they're never successful. On the other hand, we have the multi-billion dollar fitness industry. They have to sell memberships. They have to sell products. And they're not going to sell you walking. They're not going to do that, right? So it's one of the things. I'm not saying that. I'm not against that industry, of course. But uh, if you haven't exercised in recent memory, that's not going to be probably the best thing for you. <laughs> Hippocrates, Hippocrates, the first human researcher and the father of medicine, had already this figured out about 2,000 years ago when he said that walking is man's best medicine. So to conclude, we need to really make sure that uh, first, we have to focus scientists, the scientific community, on really getting the references right. We have to use perfection to understand imperfection. And for that, the lead endurance athlete is the way to go. Second, we have to stop thinking that our problems with the diseases is what we eat. We have to really identify that we have a mitochondrial dysfunction because we don't use them. And we start to use comfortably, comfortably that term. And then we have to take action. And then we need to also make sure that we, we, we wash out our brains out of that the only way is no pain, no gain to be healthy. Walking just can do the trick, especially for those people who haven't exercised in a long time. And that's very important. Einstein said that we cannot solve a problem with the same mentality we had when we created it. And this is what we're doing right now. We're not changing. We're not, we're not creating new thinking. So we need to think out of the box to probably, and maybe as simple as that, maybe, to go back about 2,000 years ago to the words of wisdom of Hippocrates, who had already things figured out. Thank you very much. <laughs>